Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got an answer to one of the biggest questions I always get, and this is from Celsius. Big news where they're going to support the Spark airdrop for all of the XRP holders also. Bitcoin is due for its second highest quarter close of all time. And this is fantastic news. And there's been a lot of bad news out there. And finishing up, we're going to go over a cue of the day, which the question is, what does it really mean when we say DYOR or do your own research? And I've got Ian Bellina of the ICO Crazy Day fame to come in and talk about how his old techniques that he used for research pay off even in today's environment. And we dig deep. We talk about AI. And I had to bring up the shill question. So we're getting all that, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is September 30th, uh, about uh, 2 p.m. Texas time. And what do we have going on in the markets? Well, Bitcoin, 0.3% <laughs> down, around 10.7. I was kind of hoping it would break over 11, but uh, I see big things coming up. And uh, it hasn't really dropped too much. It's just kind of teetering on that little uh, level coiling up i think uh over the next week to two we're gonna see definitely blast over 11 but um, hey who knows ethereum still has not dropped down below 350 however still hasn't hit 400 which i wanted to but hey here we are heather's tether uh, around 15 billion market cap xrp market cap at 10 billion uh sitting around 23 cents watch out i remember when xrp and tether were really jockeying back and forth and it was pretty close now it's not even close it's a five billion dollar gap and i don't really ever see it dropping down at all also we've got binance coin a big time 1.8 percent or 21 percent for the week and binance is, has a little bit of a resurgence thanks to all the DeFi talk bitcoin cash down 0.4 percent but still at six spot i like that polka dot still above four dollars but down 1.3 for the day but 5.3 up for the week and chain link oof what a little bit of a tumble that one took just was the darling not too long ago hitting around 17 18 dollars now we're below 10 not a good day for chain link holders like myself bitcoin sv still in the top 10 what are you gonna do cardano almost at 10 cents but up 0.3 but up you know 22 percent for the week so we'll take that and then that's uh the big stuff monero up 6.6 .6, cosmos 3.7 nothing really too fantastic that really jumps out 6.8 percent for maker that's not too bad 12 percent for the celsius network and finally breaks above that dollar mark maybe it's because what's going on let's just get into it so this is big news this is a question that i get all the time there is the spark airdrop which is going to bring the functionality of smart contracts to xrp and the question i always get is rob where is it going to happen well it's going to happen on certain exchanges like oh excuse me here's seven exchanges that actually support it and we've got uh, altcoin trainer anchor usd bit true not BitPay, uh coin spot i think that's an australian um exchange cred gatehub and uphold and now to add to that list is going to be celsius so here's alex mashinsky to tell you what's going on partner with spark we uh, also uh, tweeted about it on uh on our twitter account that uh, we worked out a deal to make sure that everyone uh who has xrp on celsius is gonna get spark and uh, airdropped effectively into their celsius account so you don't have to do anything. You just need to have all of your XRP with Celsius and uh, you'll get the rewards. Uh, plus, you're going to get Spark uh, when they actually go live, which is planning for December or whenever it actually happens. But uh, the the good news is, is that uh, Celsius is doing all the hard work for you. You don't have to do anything. And uh, I know other many other providers are not offering uh, Spark at all. So Two things. First of all, Alex loves to say these things like, "Hey, they're not they're not doing this for you, but we are." Hey, don't worry about them. Look what we're doing. I I got to tell you, this guy's the greatest marketer of all time. And uh, also, check out that sweet shirt. Banks are not your friends. Pretty nice. I got to get one of those. So that's that's the first thing. The second thing is this is huge news. I mean, uh, people have been asking me all the time about the extra because they don't want to go through the whole process. I actually did a video about it and I explained how it it's all supposed to be done. You have to do a lot of, you know, a couple of things, not too tough, but I mean, there's nothing easier than just having XRP on Celsius and just, you know, getting this airdrop. I mean, how simple is that? Love it. I mean, if you don't know, I'm a huge believer in Celsius. I, I, I like Alex Mashinsky. I like what he's doing over there. Very transparent. He's actually been on, been on the show uh, once, hope to get him back. And I like exactly what they're doing over there. And uh, they are actually my, as I call them now, my one, two, three punch. And uh, we've, I've got uh, Kraken, 
uh, Celsius and Voyager. Uh, I like Celsius because I keep, I actually keep, now I keep 30% of my entire portfolio on Celsius. And the reason is, is because the rates, it's just, just to have your, your cryptocurrency sitting there, you'll have, you know, uh, a pretty good interest rate, uh, depending on what you actually have. And I have actually a huge chunk of my uh, XRP tokens. Uh, and now I get to say, hey, XRP is doing something for me. So <laughs> not too bad. So I like that. Uh, that's why I, I agree with Celsius. And I got uh, a ch big chunk of my portfolio over there. Voyager, like it. that's where I like to uh, buy things. Uh, there is a problem, though, with Voyager. Only half of the assets you can take off. I'm really not too happy about that, so just be aware. And then Kraken is my third one, and I cannot wait till they open up that bank with their banking license because I will be using them exclusively for all my businesses, and I cannot wait. So uh, this, if you don't know, this is the exchange of wallet fees. Uh, it's a Google spreadsheet, and there's going to be a link in the description of every one of my videos. It looks just like this. And it pre pretty much goes over what I recommend and don't recommend, what I use and do not use, and why I don't use them, and things that I don't really like, like eToro. <laughs> I just don't like it. Um, and I've added one on there, uh, Swift. SwiftX is an Australian only exchange. Obviously, I can't use it, but I mean, there's one good thing about this one, and that is the customer service is outstanding. That should be the actual gold standard. I wish if Coinbase could do what SwiftX is doing over there, pfft, you you got a winner. But uh, on the top of every one of these uh, different little categories, I've got an affiliate link. You don't have to use the affiliate. You can go right to SwiftX or right to Celsius or right to Kraken and sign up. But if you use my affiliate links, you get between 10 and 25 bucks. So just be aware. You can do whatever you want to do. Anyhow, that's it. Let's move on. Next up, I got this from Skew, and this is from my... Uh, Twitter account. And I thought it was pretty interesting because it was, it shows you, let me just blow this up. This is the second highest close of all time per quarter for Bitcoin. So you can see this is going back to 2014, right? Of course, you know, it goes back farther. It's pretty funny. Digital asset game. <laughs> and uh, so the the best quarter closing of all time was, of course, 2017 and Q4. That was a marvelous run. And then it just edged out uh, Q2 in 2019. And if we hold the price, which I think it will, uh, after tomorrow, we will close out Q3 at a 10690 somewhere around there. So congratulations. I know we talk about the, the, the crypto space and, and we see a lot of different fluctuations, but we have to remember, look at where we were before. The market cap was well under $100 billion. Now here we are going around 350 Things are looking up, and I can only see great things coming up in the next year. Just got to hang on, and uh, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. But uh, just got to have a little bit of ice in your veins. All right, so that's it for today. I had to actually uh, condense everything because I did a really deep dive with Ian, Ian Bellina. And he pretty much just lays it out how he used these research techniques and he turned 20000 into $5 million. Now, there's a couple of things that I will say is that we went over the old style technique and there's a new style, which is one of his actual websites that he does. And you can do it either way. Uh, I'm going to stick with, with the old way and it works, it works out well for me. And then we actually got into the, uh, the, uh, shill question because you know, I had to ask the question. So let's, uh, let's jump in. Welcome back to uh, the office, another Q of the day. And this one is a pretty good one. Um, and it's one of those things that I don't really think about too much because I just kind of throw that, this term out there, which is do your own research, do your own research. And the question actually is from Ian and Ian says, Hey Rob, I keep asking this question, uh, to multiple other YouTubers, but no answer yet. But everyone always says DYOR, do your own research. But what does that entail besides these videos from different influencers? Is there any specific route you could suggest to research potential tokens? So that's that, that is the first part. And, this, and it was a pretty great question because it really makes you delve into the really nitty gritty of it. And so before I could actually get a chance to answer it, the uh, person answers it says, uh, it means what does the project do? Who does it? Is it useful? Does the team have a good track record? Are there any enough users, partnerships? Does it have a future? Is there something out there? And, and, and they go on and on and on, which was a fantastic answer. And then Ian comes back and says, that's great. What the heck is that? I don't know where to find this information. I don't know where it all is. I don't have time to do this thing. So I was like, this is a pretty great question. So um, what I did was I reached out to uh, history because when I got in in 2017, uh, there was a guy, a gentleman, by the name of Ian Bellina. And he had a pretty great spreadsheet and he pretty much laid it all out and he had the ICOs and it was a super exciting time. Now, uh, the thing, thing with that is that Ian did a lot of research and it was good stuff. It was just moving into it, not all of Ian's 
predictions panned out because who the heck is perfect? So what I did was I reached out to Ian and he said, he came on, he's here right now. Welcome Ian. And uh, he's going to show us. Glad to be here. Thank you, Ian. He is going to show us the methods that he used all the way back then to find out all this information that uh, Tim Pohn is actually at, uh, asking. He's going to show us an old way and he's going to show us a new way. So, and then we're going to give him some other things and talk about it. So Ian, thanks for coming on. So how did you find all this information? How can, how can Ian answer Ian's question? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so the market has changed. Getting lots of data in the crypto space is very, very tough, especially with new products launching very quickly. And here at Tokyometrics, we've built a platform that is data-driven. We go out there and we, we basically bring both quantitative data points from platforms like CoinMarketCap and others. So investors can go through and analyze and have all the data in one place. Then we also have our team of humans from Goldman Sachs and, and my background at, at IBM Watson going through and building methods for evaluating cryptocurrencies from both fundamental analysis perspective. So questions, as you mentioned, uh, do they have customers, the team, the background, the marketing, reputation, and then also doing deep code reviews uh, and going through the code and trying to find out is this actually a good project from a purely developer perspective? Plus also having TA, because TA in crypto matters a lot from a technical analysis perspective. So we bring all this together into one platform that makes it very easy for anybody without even, even having to, to be a beginner to quickly understand and do their own research very quickly in a self-serve manner. Okay, so Ian, so, so let's, first of all, let's break it down. So you've got a platform now called Token Metrics, right? That's a paid service. Yes. So there's some people who are like, I'm not paying. You know, I don't, I got plenty of time. They want to find it. Can you lay it out in a simple way of how to find this information that you used to do back in 2017 to find out like the basics, like where would they go? Yeah. How would they find this stuff? So break that down first. Yeah. So if you want, if you want to do your own research for free, it's definitely available. The first place I would begin is a company website. Go to the website, find the white paper, go to the white paper, read the abstract and that typically gives you a nice summary on, on what the project is. Um, then go through, just scan the white paper and just kind of see, okay, does this look like something put together in a week or something somebody actually spent time going through in a very thorough manner, mm -hmm. fleshing out the idea. And then typically I do like to read most of the white paper. Uh, if it's something that's very, very technical, then maybe I'll just skim to the parts that matter the most, so, such, such as the use case, uh, if they're talking about technology and code, I'll probably just leave that to, to our development team. But anybody can go through and skim, skim or just read a white paper to make sure they understand what the idea is about. Then I'll go through and look at the backend of, of the team. Now, in the crypto space, sometimes they won't put that on the website. So okay, right. what I do is I go on LinkedIn, put in the company name, mm -hmm. and I go through and look at the management team. So the CEO, uh, anybody in the C-suite role, the developers, and I look for good social signals of people who've had past success. So whether somebody has worked at a well-known company, so if somebody was a developer at Amazon or Google or Facebook for five years, that's a good social signal that, okay, this person is pretty competent. Or if somebody has worked with a top 25 blockchain project, so if somebody was a Bitcoin core developer, or if, if a person worked for Ethereum for two years, that's a good sign. Uh, and then I would say in the last few years, other good signals have been do they have good backing? Do they have well-known crypto funds backing them, such as Anderson Horowitz, uh, Coinbase Ventures, uh, big funds like uh, Novogratz, big funds with lots of money at risk to lose and with very large reputations to lose, right? So because they have teams that go through and do very thorough in-depth due diligence so that that in a way is a proxy for a retail investor or trader to mm -hmm. do their own research as well. Uh, and then also Got it. going through their GitHub, right? I like to look at projects that have open source code. If a project is promising the moon, but they have code that's not open source, that's a warning sign. Or if a project is promising the moon and they haven't launched anything at all, and if you go to their GitHub, it's just a smart contract and that's it. And I, that's a, a big warning sign. So for example, uh, a week back, I was looking at a project that lots of people were very bullish on. I went to look at, at their website. The entire team were just marketers. People from mm -hmm. affiliate marketing world, right, right, right. digital marketing world, no technology people. I said, okay, this to me looks like a pump and dump. 
right? because I don't see any technical acumen here. So how is this project going to survive two years down the road? Right. If there's, uh, no, if there's no CTO, a technical person, anybody who's been involved in blockchain, but marketers, well, marketers can drive it, yeah. sales can drive it, yeah. but for the longevity, it will fail. So that was a good, okay, so I get you. I yeah. see where you're going with that one. Right. Uh, and then the community. Projects with large communities, that matters a lot. But one metric I think is not looked at a lot, especially for, for projects already trading on exchanges, is what I call the liquidity ratio or turnover ratio. So if you take the daily trading volume and you divide by the market cap, that will tell you how liquid a project is. So for example, if a project has a daily trading volume of 10 million and a market cap of 5 million, right? <laughs> that yeah. means the average person holding that coin is trading it twice, meaning that lots of speculators are in that coin, people who want hodlers. So a good ratio gotcha. I like to have is between 10% to 50% because that tells you one is liquid. So I personally don't like to invest into any project with a ratio lower than 10% because that tells you that token is not liquid. Right? So for example, if, if it has a trading volume of 1 million and a market cap of 20 million, it's a very illiquid coin. Right, so that the goal is to find products with good liquidity because in crypto, the world can be pulled underneath you very fast. Right? We've had projects, especially during Black, uh, Black Thursday in March, products crash 30%, 40%. And if you're in a project that's very illiquid, that basically becomes zero. Right? This, this also comes from my own personal experience investing uh, in private sales or products that have no, no liquidity. Yeah. Liquidity can drive very, very fast. So gotcha. all, the, all those are different factors I look at uh, from a Technical analysis perspective, that's all just purely automated TA. Uh, from a code perspective, I mentioned GitHub. If you go to GitHub, anybody can view how many people follow a project on GitHub, right? So right. you have number of stars, number of forks. So this can show actual engagement from developers. Now, it is possible to possibly gain those metrics, but for the most part, it adds more confidence if you can kind of go through and see, and see how, how often, for example, is the code updated. If a project hasn't been updated in one year, it's probably not a good project, right? For example, Litecoin. Litecoin is a pretty popular project, but there isn't too much development activity on their, on their GitHub. And it, it basically seems like one guy just posting code. Over and over. So over, right? you want to see, yeah. So you want, want to see teams that are actively updating the project on GitHub and to see lots of community involvement. That, that's also a good sign. Okay. So let me, let me, let me try to summarize. That was a lot of information. Thank you. So we look at the first, we go to the website, we look at the white paper, we go over it, see what does it do? Uh, does it have a functionality? And maybe it doesn't have competition. And then we take a look at the team, which may be on the website or not. If it's not, we go to LinkedIn. We go to LinkedIn, we take a look at it. If it's a bunch of marketers, we know it's bad. If it's a bunch of people, well, CTOs, technical people and marketers and accountants and everything else, we know it's probably a, a good type of thing. We go, to, we go to GitHub, we make sure there's an, actually an activity level and there's actually a good following. And then lastly, you talked about the liquidity versus the uh, market cap, right? So if it, if it has a yeah. large market cap and, figure that out again, again, large market cap, but there's a lot of so, washing around. So with the liquidity ratio, we look at the liquidity daily ratio. trading volume? Yeah. Divided by the market cap. Because if a project has more, if, if the average person is trading it twice a day, it's just traders in there. And once, once, once the trade is over, they exit and people are left holding bags, right? So you want to find projects with yeah. very good products that are liquid, but have lots of hardware involved. Gotcha. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. And that kind of breaks it down and answers the other Ian's question, do your own research. So it's a lot of stuff, but it can be done, right? You did it all the time in 2017 when the ICOs were there. Okay. Before we start to talk about token metrics, let me, I'm going to just lay it out there because I know there's going to be a lot of comments. Ian's a shill. Why'd you have a shill on? He does nothing but shill. So talk to us about what happened in 2017 moving forward and, what, and maybe the, some of the things that you learned. Because let's be honest, we're not yeah. the same people we are two, three years ago. So take it away. Let's hear. So my perspective on that is I built up a large following for being fully transparent. Right? I had a spreadsheet that was open source. Anybody could go there and see my trades, my investments, my I methods heard. as to why I was investing in, in projects. Right? So in 2017, I became the poster child for ICOs. And the ICO <laughs> bubble popped. Being the poster child kind of came with, with those 
I, I would say dumb, dumb side effects of me also kind of having my image kind of tarnished, right? And yes, right, there were projects that I invested in and thought would, would end up being great projects, ended up being scams, right? So uh, that part I definitely do accept. But one thing I've learned as an investor is to just learn from, learn from your mistakes. And I've learned that the biggest mistakes have actually had the most growth, right? So token metrics came from my biggest mistakes because we had the system, the spreadsheet, and we thought we had all the data. Yeah. But one thing I've learned is it's basically a cat and mouse game. The, the, the market is always adapting. It's always changing. There's some people out there who have bad intentions, who try to game investors' systems. And I knew that we had to evolve and, and basically just improve our due diligence. So I ended up investing over $2 million of my own money, yeah. put, putting together the, the right team, doing the research to build the technology, the AI, and all this bringing people like Bill on from, from Goldman Sachs, bringing on developers from Goldman Sachs. So to me, my mistakes, uh, I've learned from them, right? And if you go through and look at my track record, it's still pretty good, right? The success rate we had publicly, right? From getting into the private sale of chain, like uh, even products like synthetics, uh, finding products early like that, like, like, like Icon, right? Uh, even now, recently helium network right so our research was good but it's not perfect and i think people were under the assumption that it was perfect and i think that's something we've also learned in terms of risk management and the main part of this platform was now people can do their own research and not just blindly follow me but also go through and bring everything they would need in one platform from the technical analysis to now even adding artificial intelligence so working at ibm watson for four years one thing i learned is ai is the future and it's now come to a point where I'm willing to admit that, okay, humans have limitations. True. AI can look at so many more different data points and find out patterns in the data that humans overlook. So I will say this. Uh, people will even call me a show. Like I just, I, I just talked about a, a notebook uh, recently. And they're like, ah, you shill, how dare you? Look, if it's a good product and it fits your needs and it's going to be good for you, it's going to be okay. So for Ian, I... Thanks for being honest and just, you know, saying, hey, I made some mistakes. Because these days, how often do you hear people say, you know what, I made a mistake. I'm not 100% perfect. It's so rare. It's so rare. So it's, it's amazing when someone says, like, you know, hey, I made a mistake. But I learned from those mistakes. And I put that into uh, another project that I truly believe in, like, to like you're talking about token metrics, which you did there. And so it makes total sense of like, hey, not getting perfect, learn from mistakes. Here I go with token metrics. And this is what I've learned. And this is where it's a better project. So great. Okay. Makes sense to me. So let's walk through it. Show me all about it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And so this is why I, I, you know, I had John to go like, here's the manual method. If you want to go through all that stuff and that's fine. You can do that. If you got a lot of time, that's cool. If you're somebody who like, I want to invest, I don't have a lot of time. I want someone else to do the hard work for me. This is for you. So I'm going to give everybody options and that's what makes the world go around. Right. All right. Okay, Ian, so uh, we're back at uh, Token Metrics. And again, you can use whatever uh, uh, different type of process you want. The manual one that Ian just talked about, or the one we're going to go over now. It depends on how much time you have and effort and all that good stuff. So uh, Ian uh, gave me a little uh, quick pass. So let's take a look inside under the hood. And what is this all about? Ian, take it away. So this is the homepage when you log in. This shows the Token Metrics indices. So taking all our ratings that we've done on different projects and building model portfolios that people could, could, could follow because not everyone has time to go out there and spend hours a day researching projects. So if somebody wants to build a diversified portfolio based on their preferred investment style, this is where they would go to. So if you go down here, for example, let's say you're a day trader and you want to know what coins to trade. So if you just choose trader daily okay. and choose technical analysis, click submit, Got it. So it's going to go through, take our technical analysis ratings and find 10 coins and build a portfolio around that. And then everything is fully transparent and logged. So if you scroll down, it, it gives you a pie chart. So this pie chart is allocated based on, on the grades for technical analysis. We have different metrics that, that, that quants use, such as shop ratio, so tuna ratio, max drawdown, the returns. Then if you go down, 
it also compares the return of this index uh, in, in the last two months or whatever time frame versus Bitcoin. So telling you whether or not you you, be, you would make more money trading this versus trading Bitcoin. Okay. And then every single trade at the bottom is logged as well. So if you go down there, all the transactions are there, right? So the price, the entry, the ROI. Okay, so it looks like like this is actually this is actually done automated wise, or this is actually what you guys do, and then you log it, and then so people can see it. No, so this is fully automated by our system. This is okay. based on the technical analysis rates that our models go through and and basically pick up. Everything is based on machine learning. Um, then, uh, for example, let's switch now. We'll go back to the top. Okay. So change the time. Yeah, change the time horizon to weekly. Okay. And now choose price predictions. Okay. And click submit. And now it's going to take our price prediction models uh, from AI and build a portfolio based on what tokens it thinks will go up. So go down. Ah. So this is the portfolio based on the price predictions. So if somebody wants to follow just pure, purely based on TA, if somebody wants to follow purely based on the price predictions, they can achieve the same thing here as well. Uh, and then same thing, the returns are logged there. Okay. And then... Same thing can also be done with the value investor. Let's say somebody is a hodler, they want to hold for one year. That would they would just mean. change the switch to, to value investor. Okay. They would change to annual, to annual, annually. Okay. And balanced approach and just click submit. And it will go through and create a portfolio based on that. Now, one thing to note, the time horizon is how often the index will rebalance. So something that's annual it will only update once a year. So it's for somebody who wants to target long-term capital gains tax treatment. So meaning they won't be getting the latest and greatest coins, but these are projects our, our ratings think have good long-term staying power long-term. My right? so projects like Ethereum, Matic, Cosmos, Maker, Dash, Bitcoin. Now, so while all this is great, right, this kind of shows you the speed to value. Mm -hmm. Internally, we've been testing a new grade that we plan to launch called Quant Grade. So this is taking quantitative, quantitative data points, over 54 data points, and building a portfolio around them. Metrics I mentioned earlier, like max drawdown, all these different numbers. So for perspective, a good investor, uh, sorry, a good trader has an accuracy or success rate or win rate of about 50 to 55%, which is pretty good. If you consider that 80% of traders lose money, right? There's lots of acad academic research proving this, that 80% of traders lose money. Right. And the ones who make money, their success rate is about 50 to 55%. So for transparency, our models, uh, the overall grade accuracy is 62%. The fundamental accuracy from back tests and just success is 64% accurate. The technical analysis model is 55% accurate. We're internally, we've been working on a new model that currently is 76% accurate, which is pretty mind blowing. So basically, in essence, seven out of 10 times is going to be correct if it thinks a coin is going to go up. So we plan to launch that this month. So it'd actually be pretty cool for your audience to come check it out once we launch that. And this is fully automated. So this is so good in a way that we actually plan to have this replace the humans on our team. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and so the humans will basically just focus on writing investment reports and doing actual analysis and everything can be fully automated because what happened in August and with the DeFi blow up essentially, it was very tough to keep track of all these new coins as they're being added to these platforms like CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap. So right. we, we wanted a fully automated automated way that would go through looking at over 50, 50 data points and find the best risk to reward investment or trade. And from now we've reached a point where we're very confident based on our testing mm -hmm. that this is outperforming a good trader by over 20% and it's outperforming anything we have by over 10% that this is a good thing to introduce. So we plan to bring that this month. Uh, we'll, we'll also create an index around that. And the long-term vision for token metrics is to, in a way, do what Jim Simons did at, uh, at his fund, the Medallion Fund. For those who don't know, Jim Simons is the most successful hedge fund manager of all time on Wall Street. And he ushered in the quant revolution. He has a, through the lifetime of his fund, he's basically returned about almost 40%. Versus Warren Buffett's 20% annual returns. And this has been based purely from just machine learning and taking quantitative based models. So right now, token metrics, we look at about 74 different data points and we're working now on expanding this in the future to look at thousands. So bringing in 
equities, bringing in futures markets, bringing in macro indicators, bringing in data points like uh, unemployment, inflation, mm-hmm. housing, and really trying to take what a smart investor would, t- would, would do from both a, a macro perspective and a micro perspective and completely automate it. Because our, our thesis is that AI is the future and machine learning can l- look at so many more different d- data points and find the hidden patterns that a human can do. So that's kind of what we have. Now, then if you go to data, we also have the actual readings for people who want to drill down and, and do their own research as opposed to following an index. So if you go here, this is similar to coin market cap, but it's based on our grades. So we go through and we rate cryptocurrencies based on two approaches, one for a trader and one for a value investor. A trader is somebody who's day trading or swing trading. The most a trader will, would hold is probably a few weeks. And we tell you uh, these are the top coins right now in real time based on our analysis. I was going to say, I see you got uh, ample fourth as uh, it's ranked third, but the market cap is 107. That could be a uh, pretty big pretty yeah. big play for some people. The good trades are products that have a high token metrics ranking and a, a market cap lower than that. So there's a good arbitrage, meaning that this, we think it's undervalued today where it is versus where the current market, market cap is, for example. Yeah, I see Holochain and Matic. I talked about that yesterday. Yeah. Uniswap still scoring. So, okay, I got you. And then the next thing, uh, so if you just go back to the top, so click the filter on monthly TA trend, the monthly TA, yeah, click that filter, click very bullish and bullish filter. That's going to go through and filter just coins that have good TA. Right? So if somebody wants to trade purely based on TA, this goes through with just two clicks tells are in a bullish trend. Then scroll to the right. And then we also have price prediction as well. All right, so yeah. for instance, uh, let's look at Bitcoin's price prediction. So just go to the top search bar and just type in Bitcoin. Yeah. Now click on Bitcoin. So the price predictions are also one of the most popular parts our customers use on token metrics. So we go through looking at just historical pricing. So this page is where we have more token details. So for, for people who want to go through the price predictions, the fundamentals, the technology, the TA, all that is here. Right, so let's go to price prediction, the second tab on the left. And this will go through and show where our models think Bitcoin is going uh, historically. So scroll down to the bottom, down to the bottom on the chart. Yeah, so this chart shows, so this is a rolling one month prediction. Basically 30 days, it looks out 30 days in the future using the past historical price on Bitcoin. And it tries to build a model based on AI on where it thinks Bitcoin is going. So obviously it's not perfect. Well, I like this uh, one right here, Ian. I'll take 11.6, <laughs> October 26th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically predicting Bitcoin w- will go up, right? So everything is fully transparent. We log all the predictions down there, which shows past history. Now, the way to use this is don't just come here, say Bitcoin is going up in one month to that price and not come back again, right? Because this is a rolling price prediction. With every new daily close in price, that gets factored in into the next prediction. And so uh, the best way to use this is to probably check it two to three times a week just to see where the trend is going. So for example, after one week, there'll be one week worth of new pricing data that gets factored into the prediction that it makes for the next one month. Right? So if there's a big crash in Bitcoin or Bitcoin goes up and there's a huge rally, that those daily closes will be factored in as well got it interesting stuff and then for if you want to look at like we talked about the actual project itself instead of going through all the things of course we're looking at data points inside here but is there a part where it would talk about oh let's just say polka dot and there's like some data points in there that we could take a look at is that how it works or no uh, yeah so type in polka dot at the top polka swap polka dot so we have the fundamentals page where our team goes through and looks at and basically does fundamental analysis looking at the team the background the customers right um then same thing with the technology we have the code reviews there so that is help, helpful for, for people who research so this would be it right 84 percent. and then yeah. i guess here's the summary and then you have something else here yeah then the team then we have questions we typically like to ask right and we go through and we rate that so the book that is a very solid project all across the board, right? That's why there's lots of interest in it. But for people who maybe 
who want to do their own research, we do have that available as well. So with the fundamentals and same thing with the, the technology. Got you. Okay. So this is where it'll all be. More 10 proof of stake. Yes. Awesome. Okay. That would be, that'd be good for something like me. I'm not a TA guy. I'm not a trader guy. I'm just a long-term investor. So this would be the thing for me. And of course, I always go for the stuff that I'm interested in. And uh, that's usually how it works. But yeah. Okay. Anything else? Or is that pretty much... I mean, there's a lot of things to go over. And, you know, of course, we can't do it all, right? But yeah. uh, anything big that... Uh, anything else? or uh, We do have discounted trials available. So anybody can try it out for seven days for anywhere between two bucks to five bucks. So pretty easy. Uh, then we also do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if after the trial, you, you, after one month, you're unhappy, we'll, we'll refund your money, no questions asked. Right? So we want to make sure people who use the platform love the platform. Got it, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, yeah thanks for letting me use it, I really appreciate it. And that is uh, pretty much it. And uh, I, so for everybody who's watching the video, I don't have a affiliate link. I have uh, <laughs> I really nothing just to, to give you the, just go to app.tokenmetrics.com. Uh, this wasn't a, a paid promotion. It's just that Ian was gracious enough to come on and help us with that first question. So of course I'm going to talk about uh, his other project, which I got to I got to tell you, I don't have time to look at all this stuff. I got three other businesses to run, and uh, I would probably, if I wanted to look at this stuff, I would probably go this way. That's just how it is. All right, Ian, thanks so much. I appreciate it, man, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right, thank you. All right, so that's it. So thanks for sticking around with me. I thought that was pretty good. And now even for me, like I feel like I know a little bit more about research and how to do things. So uh, Ian, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Anyhow, I uh, want to give some random shout outs to people who've joined up for uh, Digital Asset News. And uh, we got DH Frankster. I like that. Frankster. Martin, Martin Benuelos, uh, Mr. Toad, Hype Me Up, Keith K, Frank Weinheimer, Ricky Taylor, and Bob. So thanks everybody for signing up, really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Don't know, YouTube does your controls it and uh, just check those out if you got time, fantastic. Uh, thanks again for sticking with me, really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.